Well, it's uh, mid-August. The uh, air quality from the fires in California have been really bad this summer in Colorado. In fact, as of uh, last week, we had such a bad day that they said the air quality was 10th worst in the world, right behind Cairo. So I was gonna come and hit the high country last week and I just felt it was gonna be a little too hard on the lungs. Cause I mean, you couldn't, the visibility even, you couldn't hardly see any defilade behind whatever ridge you were looking at, regardless of how tall the mountains were. So air quality is a little better today. Uh, school's back in session, so I'm hoping the crowds are down. But I got a little inside baseball on a high mountain lake that will remain nameless. Uh, from uh, I got an email from a guy after he watched one of my high mountain uh, videos. So I'm going to go check that out. It's going to be a bit of a hike. It's probably going to take me about two hours to get there. But uh, we'll see. See how it goes. But uh, I'm all by myself today. Nobody could come fishing with me. So it is... Uh, it's going to be interesting, so let's go. So on this trail, there are two major elevation gains that I'm going to have to deal with. And they're just going to have switchback trails all the way up. But I'm heading up, you can't see through the trees, but I'm heading up to a ridge line um, through this thicket. That's going to be my first elevation gain, but it's, it's, it's going to be a tough one. I'm about uh, halfway up my first elevation gain. Came from way down there. It's starting to open up a little bit. Starting to see a little bit of the views, which is nice. Yeah, you can tell it's getting steeper and steeper the closer to the edge of the ridge that we get, but a little more than halfway. I'm probably about two thirds of the way tilt levels off so we're just gonna have to power through this but I'm glad I started early in the morning it was nice and cool it kind of saves you a little bit in energy all right so I made it over the first the first hump of this journey it wasn't too bad and uh yeah, I'm just kind of strolling along as soon as I break this tree line. There's a couple lakes that I'll run into that I'll have to bypass to get to the lake that I'm trying to get to. So those should be just up ahead, I'd imagine. All right. Here's one of the lakes. I'm gonna bypass this lake, but I cannot stand it. I have to come check it out. Ah, it's pretty in here. Oh, yeah, one just hit right here in front of me. Oh, oh, that's a good size one. Oh, nice. Oh, he's going nuts. He's like three inches. Looks like a cutthroat. It's 
see if he comes up again. Oh, there's another one right there. No, those are not cutthroat. No. Those are brook trout. Look at that. Little brookies. I've made it to the second lake that I have no intention on fishing, but I'm going to check it out anyway. I'm already seeing them rising over here too. I go right behind this little tree. Look at that. This is a cool lake. There's there's cutthroat in this one. So but I'm gonna move on. This is, uh, I'm like uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi on Tatooine. These aren't the lakes you're looking for. Ooh, they are tempting though, especially when they're hitting the surface like that. But I can always come back if it's this uh, lake I'm headed to is a bust. Onward this is my last push. I wanna get up to that tree line right there. So I'm just gonna take this trail straight up the side there it doesn't look like it's uh, i mean it's steep but it doesn't look like it's that long so should probably be all right uh, i'm gonna change my route there's a looks like there's another way to get up there over here that follows a little creek so i'm gonna go check that out All right, well, this isn't the lake. This is just a small pool that's on the west side of the lake that feeds, but I always like looking in these because sometimes the fish come in and out of the main reservoir, or on the, I'm sorry, the main lake. They get trapped in here and you can chase around a big bruiser which makes it a little easier because they're kind of confined. So I'm just gonna check this out for a little bit while I walk around. And then on the other side should be the lake. Another hit. Oh yeah, look at that thing. Look at that bruiser. That's a big fish. That is a big fish. I might have to come hunt him later. That's a big old cutthroat. All right, I have made it to the lake. There's one other person here. He was camping out. His name is 
Bill. And according to Bill, all the rumors are true that there are big cutties in here. So I'm gonna go exploring. Looks like there's some nice drop-offs all around the lake. I'm just gonna kinda scout the lake out until I uh, find something I wanna fish to and set up. Oh, I'm excited. Let's go. So I've got a hopper and an ant on there. I might switch here pretty soon if I see some trollers switch to a, uh, a beetle, as there's lots of beetles around here. So according to my man, Bill, the dry fly action is ridiculous around noon. He said he's he fishes lakes a lot. He's throwing streamers to these fish. They're real lethargic. They don't want them. They just troll. And then they've uh, they've even been refusing chronomids, droppers, things like that. They just seem to want to come up and sit big terrestrials off the surface. So I'm going to go with that intel for right now. And then we'll, uh, if I start seeing fish and then they're refusing it, then I'll start changing tactics here in a little bit. One right here, but I'm, if I pick up my line, he's gonna spook. So I gotta wait for him to look at that. Starting to kind of pop off. Okay, let's go and behind this rock. That's good. Oh, there he is. Oh, he sees it. Come on. Not even a tiny bit interested. Okay, so what I'm doing, and it, it's kind of a pain in the butt, but I'm kind of untapering my leader, essentially. So you don't want a tapered leader if you're gonna drop <laughs> chronomids down into the depths because the taper on the leader actually uh, slows the descent of the flies. So I'm just trying to skinny up my leader a little bit. And then I'm going to do a, that's a weak piece of tippet. I don't like that. I'm going to do a slip strike indicator and I'm just going to get it off this shelf. And then you know, it's not nearly as uh, exciting as dry fly fishing because you don't get to see that, but it is, you're still active. So the way chironomids work in the water is they, as they ascend from the bottom. And so you're still going to do a retrieve. You're not just going to let it sit out there and do nothing and just wait for the, the strike indicator to go under. You're going to keep constant tension on the line and you're just going to do this slow snail's pace overhand retrieve and then when you finally get the retrieve then you throw it in and you do it again so the way i'm going to do this is backwards from what i would do if i was fishing a stream typically if i'm nymphing with this at a, with the stream or in a stream i'm going to put the larva near my weight point because I want that bouncing off the bottom and then I want my tail end flies, the emergers or the pupa to start coming off the bottom a little bit more. But in this case, 
sorry, in this case, I want my emergers towards the front because I'm going to be keeping constant tension on the line and bringing those out first. And then I'm going to leave the larva near the near the uh, the back end of it. So the exact opposite of what I do in a stream. Okay. So I'm going to put a little bit of weight on there, but first I'm going to put my slip strike indicator system on there. And all I'm going to do, shoot, I don't want all this blown away. All this, excuse me, all this stuff blown away. Um, and I'm just going to feed the line through that peg. And then it's going to come through at the bottom like that. And then, oop, these are not what I want. Let's see what I got in here. Ah, voila, there are all my chronomids. So I'm gonna start off with, um, I'm gonna do this nice shiny green chronomid, and then I'm gonna probably chase it with a buzzer, and then a larva at the bottom. So, All right, well, wish me luck. I'm gonna go off camera and set this whole thing up. My larva at the back. I've got my buzzer right there. And then I've got my emerger, the snow cone chronomid right there. I'm gonna pinch a little bit of weight just to get it down nice and fast. And then uh, I'll set my strike indicator and get going. Set a slip strike indicator. Oops, just dropped my weight, that sucks. I'm just gonna hold uh, and pinch at the end of the plastic peg. I'm gonna hold and I'm gonna pinch at the end of the, the styrofoam um, indicator. And then I'm just gonna insert that. It's gonna make that loop just like that. And that's how you set it. Okay, now instead of finessing it out there, like I was with my dry flies, I'm just kind of lobbing it and I have to I have to throw a little bit of a haul in there just to get it now oh, that's not even gonna cut through the wind very well but all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let that set I'm gonna let those flies get down to the bottom it's hard to tell at, at this depth but I'm not sure how deep that is right there um, but I'm just guesstimating right now so once I think they're down low enough, I just do a small retrieve. You can see this, I'm just barely, just little six inch retrieves, just keeping that line control, waiting for something to move that indicator. Like that, yeah. But it was nothing. All right. It's hard, man. It's I really need a six weight to do this. I'm fishing a soft tip five weight, which isn't ideal for this. I should have brought a. Oh, I do have a six weight. I have to set the whole thing up now. <clears throat> I was like, hey, I wish I would have brought my six weight, and I actually did. That worked. I'd been sitting here for a while. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, he's real red too. This is a cool looking fish. You can see that strike indicator goes all the way down. I think they've got some fight in them. They're no joke. And he ain't giving up yet. He 
Took the buzzer. That's a good, that's a good little fly. Look at that thing, look how red it is. That's a good looking fish. Ooh man, these are heavy fish. Holy cow. Yeah, he is not giving up. Look at this thing. Oh man. Mama. Look at that thing. Holy cow. Oh. You're okay, buddy. Holy cow. Finally, a connection. That thing's a pig. Well, I mean, nothing's rising, no, nothing's trolling. There's zero action right now. So I think I'm gonna go to that little holding pond and see if I can go in there with like a beetle or something and yank a fish or two out of there until some hatch comes off or something. Cause it is just, I mean, I, there hasn't been a surface hit in a long time. All right. I'm gonna start working this thing over here. I'm already seeing rises. <clears throat> so I'm gonna try to sneak in there and see if I can't coax some of these fish out. There's one cruising right here. Oh, he's moving too fast. little inlet. Here we go. Here he comes. Oh. He nipped at it but he rejected it. to return to inform Bill I have failed. I must live with this shame for at least the rest of the afternoon. It's terrible. It's a ter terrible burden I must bear, but oh well. Yeah, I tend to believe what Bill's telling me is, you know, last week when he was here, he, he was saying there was a lot more hatching. Probably a lot of, um, of Calabatus were hatching and they were going nuts on the surface, but we're not seeing any surface strikes probably since, I mean, one or two since noon. So I've gone back to nymphing, but still we're not even seeing any cruisers or anything, so... I'm not really sure what's going on. I mean, at least this morning we were seeing cruisers on the shorelines, but we're not seeing that at all. Yeah, it's uh, it's tough. I mean, these these fish are big fish in here, and big fish means there's lots of food, and uh, they're very lethargic. They weren't going to go after any kind of uh, streamers. They were uh, sipping dry flies and. You know, I caught my one and only on a, a buzzer, on a, a chronomid buzzer. And uh, I think if it was a different day, there's a little more of a hatch going on, starting a feeding frenzy. Would have done a lot better, but this thing is like glass and there's nothing hitting the surface. But, came up here alone and uh, ended up meeting up a, meeting a pretty nice guy. And uh, 
had a good day. Before I left, I, I thanked him for, you know, being a good fishing buddy for the day, and he said likewise, and he's, he's actually gonna, he's got a camp, he's gonna stay up here and fish it again tomorrow. So that's how you kind of know he's not full of crap, because, I mean, he hiked all his, his stuff up here, so he's had those stellar days up here, so it's just a matter of timing. And we'll see if I can get down the hill without killing myself. This is fishing. Sometimes you have really good days and sometimes you have really good days, just not a lot of fish. And this just happens to be a really good day where I only caught one fish. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> that thing came flying out of the water. That is not bad. That is actually a decent sized brook trout. Oops, yeah, here.